Shumai and welcome to Digital School Wales. In this video, we're going to be using the free app, the Wick Editor, in order to create a frame-by-frame -frame animation. Now, as I mentioned, the Wick Editor is totally free to use. So that's all you need to follow along with this activity today is a device, something like a Chromebook is ideal, and a connection to the internet. Now, if you enjoy this animation activity, I'm sure you'll also enjoy the coding activities in the Coding One Activity Pack from Digital School Wales. If you'd like a free sample and a peek around inside the Coding One Activity Pack, that's all you need to do is follow the link under this video or go to the URL that's at the bottom of the screen right now. Okay, let's get into the Wick Editor and start this animation project. On the Wick Editor homepage, click on the green button that says Launch Web Editor. The app will load and you just need to click on the green button that says Try It. The app is really easy to use. Here on the upper left hand side, we've got all of the tools that are available. At the bottom here, you'll see your timeline. And here you can see all of the individual frames. Now, automatically in Wick Editor, 12 frames together will make one second of video. So for a one second frame by frame animation, we'll need 12 separate still images in these frames. This red line is called the playhead and it shows us on which frame we are right now. So of course, to begin with, we're going to be on frame number one. On the top right hand side, you'll see these two buttons C and P for copy and paste and we're going to be using quite a lot of those in this video. Here's the bin if you want to delete something, undo and redo if you want to step backwards if you think you've made a mistake, or redo if you stepped backwards by mistake. Let's get to it then. So in this first frame, we are going to design a simple stick man. Let's start off with the head. So to create the head, I'm going to use the ellipse tool to form a circle. You can select different colors if you like, but I'm going to leave the fill and stroke colors as black for this one. So I'm going to start on the left hand side and I'm going to click and drag with the ellipse tool to form a circle. I'm going to form the rest of the stick man with the line tool. So you can find the line tool next door to the ellipse tool. Now you're also going to need to change the line width because the default is one pixel which is just a wire thin line. So just increase that line width to, I don't know, about six, and you'll see that we get the right thickness of line. To create the torso, I'm just gonna click where I want to start the line, drag my mouse, and then let the mouse button go when I'm happy. Next, I'm gonna work on the leg, which is stretching forwards. So again, I'm gonna click and drag. I do the same, click and drag for the lower leg, Click and drag again for the foot. That's great. Next, I'm going to work on the leg, which is stretching backwards. So I do the same again. Click and drag, click and drag, and click and drag for the foot. That looks great. So I'm going to move on to the arms. Click and drag. So with a running animation, I'm going to start off with this very open stance. And then in the next frame, we'll really be able to contrast that with a more closed stance. There we go, my stick man's complete. Now, I'd like to move him down a little bit, down to the ground. So what I want to do is use the cursor tool. Click on the cursor tool, and then I can drag a box over my stick man, selecting him. And then I can grab him by the head and move him down. Okay, I'm happy with my first frame, so it's time to move on to the second frame. To create the second frame, click on this plus icon on your timeline in the second frame box, and that'll give us a fresh piece of paper to draw on. Now, you are welcome to start from scratch on this second frame, but really, there's no need to do that. What I'm going to do is copy my first stick man from the first frame. So again, with the cursor tool, I select the stick man, and then I use the C, the copy button here, or you could use the keyboard shortcut, Control C. Then I move over to the second frame, my new empty piece of paper, and I'm going to click P or Control V to paste him in. 
Now to create the pose for this second frame, it would really be helpful to know what the first frame looked like. Over on the bottom right hand side here, you'll see this button with a funny name, Onion Skinning. Clicking that will show you a shadow of what was visible in the previous frame. Now that shadow is really going to help us to create our second frame. See if we move back, there's frame one and here's frame two and we can see the shadows. So the first thing I'm going to do is select my stick man and drag him back so that the head is overlapping slightly with where the head was in the previous frame. So the position is great, but now we need to adjust the arms and legs. Now, you could find it easier to just delete the arms and legs and start over with the line tool. But I'd like to show you a new tool, the path cursor. With the path cursor tool, you can grab the ends of lines and then you can adjust the length and the angle of the lines that are already there. Clicking and dragging the middle of a line would curve that line, which isn't really appropriate for this stick man, but it could be handy sometime in the future. So as you can see, I'm just creating this closed posture. Now that we've created our first two postures in frame one and frame two, we'll be able to recycle those two stances for the following frames. The only thing we'll have to change is the position. The odd numbered frames will all use the first stance. So that's frames one, three, five, seven, nine, and so on. And the even numbers will use our second stance, two, four, six, eight, ten, and so on. Let me show you what I mean by that. So in frame three, we want a copy of the stance that's in frame one. So back I go to frame one and with the cursor tool, I'm going to drag a box over the stick man and click on the button that says copy. And back I go to frame three and click paste. Of course, we want to move our stick man forward so that he's moving to the right. So we just drag him over and on we go. So in the next frame, frame four, I'd like a copy of frame two. So back I go to frame two and here with the cursor tool, I'm going to click and select my stick man, copy, move back to frame four, paste, and then reposition so that he's moving forward. To see how we're getting on, let's switch the onion skinning off, move the red playhead back to the first frame, and then click on the green preview play button to play what we've got so far. And as you can see, our animation is starting to take shape with the stick man starting his run across the screen. Now, I think that's pretty cool. Now, your task is to carry on with this process, copying and pasting the stances from frames one and two until your stick man gets halfway across the screen. From that point on, I want you to use your imagination. What's your stick person going to get up to next? Are they going to grow wings and fly away? Do a cartwheel? Score a goal? Kick a conversion? Jump in the car and drive home maybe? It's absolutely up to you and your imagination to see what your animating skills can get your stick person to do for the end of your animation. Please ask your teachers to share your animations with me because I really can't wait to see what you come up with. I'm just gonna finish mine off with my stick man running all the way across the screen. There we are then. As you can see, I've completed my animation with the stick man running all the way across the screen. If you're ready to share your creation, what you need to do is click on the button in the top right hand corner that says export. Exporting creates a file that people can watch outside of the Wick Editor app. For this kind of animation, a GIF is ideal. So name your project. I've got the Welsh title Person Brigai Stickman and then go ahead and click on the green button export GIF. As you can see, the GIF file has now downloaded and it's showing there on the bottom of my Chrome window and it's ready to be added to Google Classroom. You could even drag it straight to a slide on Google Slides 
or straight onto a J2E5 document. And there we go. Teachers, I would love to see what your pupils get up to with this activity. So if you're posting their animations online, please tag Digital School Wales in your post so I can see them or send them over to me on the email address. That would be fantastic. Don't forget about the free sample for the Coding One Activity Pack. If you'd like to get a sneak peek inside there on the first lesson for free, just click on the link that's at the bottom of the screen right now. Okay, thanks very much. I hope you've enjoyed this activity and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.